here. Um, I started doing fashion design since I was a sophomore in high school, so I'm on like my seventh year uh, learning how to do fashion design. And how I kind of got into natural dyeing was I I like to be very involved with my crafts and my projects. So I kind of asked myself like, why not just dye the fabric myself and make um, and play with colors around uh, with stuff that we have like at home, like. Uh, the ones that I'll be showing you uh, today um, are made from strawberries, blueberries, and uh, turmeric uh, spice. Um, so the thing about natural dyes um, is that synthetic dyes, which are what most of your clothing is dyed with, can be very toxic to the environment and pollutes uh, our water heavily. Um, and those chemicals that are used for those dyes can be very uh, difficult to work with, especially for the uh, labor industry. So. Um, I think it's a good idea to shift towards more natural dyes and environmentally friendly dyes. Uh, so today I'll be showing you, you guys how to uh, make, not make your own dyes, but how to use dyes that you can make. Um, and also how to use flowers uh, to print on fabric as well. Hi everyone, my name is Grace. Um, I'm going to be talking about natural dyes as well as um, how to put natural dyes in seed paper. So seed paper is an eco-friendly uh, paper that's made with raw materials paper and then you also add seeds in there and once you make it um, you can shred it and plant it and it'll grow into a flower. So a lot of companies use paper or even plastic when they make tags, clothing tags and whenever you take your clothes home the first thing you want to do is wear your clothes so you just pull it off and you either throw it in the trash or just pile it up and that um, I wanted to make seed paper um, because it is very eco-friendly and it can also uh, help your consumers take action and plant these at home by themselves. And thank you. <laughs> Teaching you how to make natural dyes just because it is a very long process um, and it does take a while to learn. But if you are interested in learning how to make your own natural dyes to dye fabrics or to dye paper or you can even use it to make like paints um, and watercolors, uh, this, uh, this QR code here is actually for a YouTube page uh, that actually focuses solely on natural dyes and how you can apply them to different uh, art projects. So if you want that information, that QR code is right here, and then uh, these two videos are the ones that I that think will help me out. Um, so the techniques I want to be showing you guys first is going to be using uh, the natural dyes. So uh, this is kind of a little sample that I made just by using the dye bottles um, and doing little dots. Uh, thank you. So when y'all are up here um, and trying it out, you'll just take one of these little dye bottles um, and you can do like little shapes and it'll dye the fabric. Uh, so again, this one was uh, made by using uh, turmeric spice. So it's uh, like a very strong yellow color actually. It's probably the uh, easiest natural dye just because it's so strong. This one's made from strawberries and it's a uh, very like rosy light pink color. And then this one's made uh, from blueberries. It's like a bluish slash purple color. It's also a very strong one to me. So yeah, these are pretty simple. Um, and then you can also do some tie-dye techniques. It's just like uh, tie-dyeing the shirt. So you can take one of the fabric samples um, and have rubber bands here, you can tie it up. And then you can... You can just take uh, the folded up fabric and uh, with rubber bands and dip it um, into one jar, maybe like to halfway for about maybe like five to ten seconds. And then you just take the other half and dip it on the other side. Get for maybe like five to ten seconds. And then after you're done, uh, we have some plastic bags here, and you just put it in the bag. Uh, and take home to dry, and yeah, you just uh, give it a quick rinse, and that's it. You'll have your uh, naturally dyed fa uh, fabric. Um, so the one that I really like the most is actually uh, flower, it's called flower pounding. Um, so you'll just take a square uh, square piece of fabric, put it down, and then you'll take some of the flowers that we have here. And what kind of flower is this, Jonathan? The red one? Do we know? It's okay. My house plants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly. Um, this blue one here is called Midnight Blue. Um, it's my favorite, actually. So 
after you lay down your um, flowers in whatever pattern you want, you can actually um, even use the leaves as well. This is my favorite part. So you'll just fold it in half. Um, let's see. And then this is a very good form of stress, uh, stress relief because you just take a hammer and you just pound away. So you'll have them right on top of the flowers. You might have to like open it up and see like exactly where the flowers are because you're So after you're done, you just open it up and take the little flowers out. This one's kind of messy, but this is gonna be your end result. I like, this one's better. I did it like right before with a little bit more time, but you can just do like any type of shapes and stuff. Um, Christian, if you can actually open up my piece over there. Um, so with this process, I actually made a corset out of it as well um, by using like base flowers um, and different colors and stuff. Uh, so the base of it, or the soup of it, is made from liquid chlorophyll uh, that I mentioned earlier. It's just abstracted from plants. And then um, the corset I did also with my house plants. I don't know exactly which ones. Um, but yeah, that was really, really fun to make and to play around with the patterns and stuff. Uh, so as you can see, you can make some beautiful designs just from the flowers that you have around, uh, not even in your own home, but like uh, flowers that you see around and stuff. Sometimes I'll pick flowers and keep them just to like uh, press them onto fabrics as well. But yeah, that's the demo. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Grace now and show John, something to you. Jonathan, yes. if I may ask before you hand it over to Grace, yeah. um, could you explain a little bit in more detail how you converted the blueberries to this dye solution or how you extracted the chlorophyll from your plants to get that? Yeah, okay, um, so I'm gonna give you like a simplified version of it because like I said, uh, natural dyeing is, uh, it's not a long process, but it does take a lot of experimenting. Um, you're not always gonna know uh, the, sorry. <laughs> um, you're not exactly gonna know like what the end result of the color is gonna be. Same with the flowers, um, like the flowers that are there, um, they weren't even like the, that purple one in the middle, like that was actually a blue flower, but because of the chemical reaction that comes from the plants, it'll trim differently. Um, so the gist of it is basically, you just take whatever you wanna, uh, wanna extract the dye from uh, and boil some water for about 20 minutes. Then, for example, with the blueberries or strawberries and turmeric, you just throw it in there. I would recommend doing um, about a cup of whatever you're dyeing for every three cups of water. Um, and then you just boil it in there for about, I would say, 30 minutes at least. Um, so uh, as much as the dye gets extracted, after that, you actually have to mix in some alcohol or like hand sanitizer to kill out any bacteria or to reduce uh, the chance of any bacteria growing from it because you are using um, like food, basically. And uh, after that, that's it, that's the dye. Um, and then you just soak the fabric in it. Uh, the one thing about natural dyes, though, is that in, the color can fade very quickly, so maybe don't like wash it too frequently. Um, and there's actually some things that, uh, some chemicals actually that you can put into the fabric so it holds the dye better, but I never do that. Um, just because like, you don't really wash stuff like that, you just kind of have it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a simplified version of using natural dyes, or making natural dyes. Or you could do like the Italians do with their jeans, where they put them in the freezer to kill all the bacteria. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now Chris is going to show you um, how you can apply this to uh, handmade paper. So unfortunately, we're not going to be making seed paper today because it is a week-long process. But I will go through it really fast. If you guys want all the steps, we also have paper here that you can take home. All those steps and actually use this these paper to make seed paper. Um, but basically, you want to fill up water. I use, um, I like to use containers with lids so you can trap the water in there so it, would, it doesn't evaporate. 
So I fill up water and then you put paper in. There should be only about half the amount of water compared to paper. So if you fill up paper all the way, then you put halfway of water. And then you let that sit for two to three days until it becomes like a pulpy um, consistency. So it should look something like this. It's not the prettiest. So it looks like oatmeal almost. So, <laughs> But don't eat it. Yeah, don't eat it. It's paper. <laughs> so the paper you can use is actually anything you would like. It can be like copy paper, it could be construction paper, tissue paper, or even toilet paper if you guys want. Just any scrap paper that you guys have. And then after it becomes like this, you can add flower petals in. I'm using the same ones that Jonathan used. And then you could also use natural dye to dye the paper if you would like. If you use this step, um, I would suggest letting it sit for a couple hours so the dye can soak in. And then you're going to mix it. Okay, so after you let it sit for a couple hours, you're going to want to actually blend it. You're gonna add a little bit more water, blend it, and then once you take it out of the blender, you're gonna strain it using a colander, and that was that's when you're gonna put your seeds in. You can use poppy seeds, sunflower seeds, lavender seeds, uh, daisy seeds, um, and then you wanna strain as much water out as possible, and then transfer this to wax paper, and use either a rolling pin to roll it out. So the thicker you the thinner that you roll it, it's going to be thin paper, and if you do a little thicker, it'll become like cardboard paper, um, which you can use for like, business cards or clothing tags. Yes. And then, so after it dries, it will become seed paper. Seed paper is not completely flat, so you could feel, feel um, ridges in it because of the seeds or the flower petals. And so we are going to actually be making, like decorating, uh, paper tags today that you guys can actually take home and plant yourself and then it will grow into flowers. These paper actually have 10 types of seeds in it and some of the seeds in it are poppy seeds, sunflower seeds, daisies, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of seeds in there but yeah, it will, all you have to do is shred the paper once you get home, put it in the soil, put it in the sun for about four hours a day and water it daily and it will Flower. Can you do that? I don't know if this is the question, but can you do that like with vegetables? I could do. Yeah, you could like vegetable seeds? Yeah. Yes, you can also. And then a vegetable roll? But it's going to take longer than flour. Yes. But. Alright, thank you, Grace. Thank you, Jonathan.